nag-shock ko sa light da bright kayo. Hi guys, how are you? How is everyone? Let me check the audio sa ha. So I think you guys can hear me a little bit delayed. I think I'm like 30 second delay or something. Can let me know if you guys can hear me, ha? Oh, there, you can hear me. Hi, Alicia. And hi, DJ. There, I can hear everyone. You guys can see me. Um, hi, AJ. So, all right. Let's give it a few minutes, guys, ha? Maybe let's start at like 8.05. Para everyone who wants to join can join. And then, hi, Daza. Thanks for joining. So, <laughs> nag-stream ko sa kung phone, sad, and through the computer. So, um, if you have any questions by Hanas before we start the segment, pangutan na lang mo, ha? So, oop, delayed siya. Okay. Nag-stream, nag man sa good si Paolo o Call of Duty. So, muna siya, guys. <laughs> but, um... If na may questions when it comes to content creation, feel free to ask them whether now or ask them as we go along. Um, feel free or good guys ha, mangutan na, bahala nag unsa siya ka, marag, ayo, don't feel like there's a question that you can't ask me. Um, even if it comes to like, how, are m how am I able to make money or kanang may ngana, feel free to ask me anything and everything that you want. I am super duper okay with being asked anything if it's ever anything too much kaya rin ako umuingon nga dili nako kaya <laughs> pero um hi dina hi i see nga nagtanaw si axi hi axi so um if you have anyone like right now ako ra mangud moy nagdala aning whole stream so i can't really add anyone else to the bayhana group right now but if there's someone who you think would really like this seg segment on yeah they, I can't add them right now. You can add them later on and then they can watch the uh, no, the replay. But much better if you guys are here during the live segment. So if you guys have any questions, I can answer them right away. Yay, are you guys excited? Um, okay, so Chari is asking if it's okay if mag English or Tagalog. Yes, of course, Chari. Of, as much as possible, I, I want to accommodate everyone. So I will be talking for the most part in English. So if there's anything that I say that you can't understand, feel free to ask me to repeat it. Guys, I'm here for you. So ask me anything, honestly. My husband's asking um, where am I connected to the internet? Let me check, huh? Because he's also complaining that the stream is lag. Wait. Pizza Palace 5G. Which one? It's me. My husband also really helps me with the technical segment of this. So not the 5G. Okay. Mu transfer ko sa. Which one? So, how are you? How's your week? Um, maputo ka yung connection, ha? Okay, there, we're back. Sorry. Um, is the internet better? Na in kaya ako lipstick, no? Maraguna kampat siya kigadali ko. Alright, there, is it better? I hope it's better. I switched the internet connection, so there. Um. Let me, hi Jano, hi Glynis, hi Glyn. Oh, this is perfect for you. Um, so I think we're ready to start, guys. Let me know how you are. I hope everyone's okay. I hope that your week has been okay. Chika lang ko gamay. I, sigi ko gilak this week, guys. I don't know why. I think because, um, my lady visitor is here and I was so emotional. I got really bad cabin fever, so I was really happy. Nga. 
I got to do this for everyone as well because um, recently I was asked to do this for Ready to Adult. So if you haven't heard of Ready to Adult PH, it's another group here. They talk about finances, how to adult. It's so amazing. And then I realized that there are a lot of Bayhanas who were not able to join because of course, no, we have work. Some of us are really like frontliners and I really wanted to accommodate to everyone, especially right now with the current situation whether you're a business owner or not um if you're thinking about making content if you need a new hobby especially if you're a business owner you're probably thinking right now now i wish that i had done this and stuff like that oh hold on ha nagreklamo gid akong hasban nga batik ko ng internet sige let's try 5g hold on really quick ha kay maputo lang siya very very quick and then all right it should be back right now there i'm so sorry guys we're having a little bit of technical difficulties but i think it's because everyone is online um and that's a good thing because that means everyone's at home and you are able to listen to this so are you guys ready to start okay now let me know if you're ready for me to start because we will um hi sas i think this would be really great for you aj is um saying paglan actually dili ko kalan because i'm using a kuan hui si paulo bo all right so i'm back <laughs> is the internet better this way sorry all right so there hi john okay john was saying it's much better sorry guys i wasn't informed of our internet either so are you guys ready to start because i can start now if you guys want me to hmm yeah i guess that's really just the internet Hi Andy, my tita Andy is here. She's also a vlogger. So guys, I guess it's already 8:10. I'm going to start na ha. Um if there's anyone that is a little bit late, it's okay. You'll catch it. So I'm going to start. So if you want to comment guys, I can still comment. Uh you can still comment. I can read it ha. All right. Yay! See? Laish ka ayo oi na fa meron pang fa transition transition char. There. <laughs> if you want to learn how I did this, let me know. Um, I will be more than happy to teach you how I did this whole stream. If you're having classes or if you have a stream, if you want to do a stream of your own, let me know. I'd be more than happy to teach you how I was able to set this whole thing up. So hi, Ash. Um, ja, Deej, I know the video is kind of lag. I think, I don't know. But the important thing is you can see me and then I will take breaks for my slides. So the important thing is you can catch the slides. Okay, ako na guys, it's na important. Okay, so I hope everyone's ready. Again, if you want to ask me questions, feel free to ask me anything. I will answer them either in between the chat or in between the stream or after. Ha? All right. Need. all right so yeah everyone's asking how i do this let me i'll teach it to you guys later all right so the class today class teacher teacher na guys char so today we're gonna be or i'm gonna be teaching everyone or talking about content creation for creators and businesses so there's a very specific reason why i created this talk and um ako gishang, i really sorry i forgot to say um i really tried to accommodate creators and businesses because first and foremost i consider my brands isa please or my hana as a business so right now i'm a full-time content creator i used to be a business owner i am every once in a while i take social media management um projects so this is also like it really is like ever since before i've always created content whether for my personal use or for you know for livelihood you know i'm 
I'm at that age. I need to work nudid, guys. <laughs> so, muna siya. I really created this for creators and businesses because also everything that I am teaching you right now, I have really applied for our own personal businesses as well. So, I hope this is helpful. And yeah, again, guys, feel free to ask anything. Yay. So, I'm going to move on to the next slide, all right? So, tinit. So, can you guys see the next slide? There. Why are you here? I hope that you guys can take a second and ask yourselves that. Why are you here? Is it because you have a business and you want to learn how to use social media to market it and eventually turn it into sales? Because you're a business owner, right? Or is it because you want to create content, whether for personal or professional purposes, and maybe even make money? So, I um, personally, for me, I was a content creator for a very long time. It was a hobby for me. I did so many jobs. I worked, I owned a business, I worked corporate, I did so many things until I finally felt that I was ready to take content creation and turn that into my full-time job. And now I am able to make content creation a full-time job. Every once in a while, I'll take side projects, sing Anna, but it can. So... Content creation, I would say, isn't just for someone who just wants to be, like, it's not limited to someone who's a vlogger, you know? Um, for example, for me, Baihana is very centered around women. If you are a doctor, you can also be a content creator. If you are someone who likes to sing, who likes to dance, you can also be a content creator. If you are a business owner or you're starting a business and you don't know how to start or... You don't really know how social media works. I'm going to teach it to you today. And these are very important because social media right now is the way that we market. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But I think um, I think it really helps if you know social media, whether it be for personal or for business. So, Gian is saying, Nindot ka ayo jod basta ma-figure out ni mo sa ni mo but I don't really know what I want to do. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Hold on, I have my cousin-in-law who's like really asking to join the group. All right, there. So hi, Marky. Thanks for being here. Okay, so you're either you're here because you're either a business or you're a content creator or you want to create content for different purposes whether it's to make money or something let's talk about finding your niche in a little bit okay remind me in a open forum because we'll definitely talk about it the, um i will definitely give you some pointers all right okay i've been creating content content most of you only know me as by hana but i have been creating content for the last 15 years and i say this a lot i create i've been creating content for the last 15 years it's been a hot minute <laughs> so yeah if you are those two things, or either of these two things, then the internet is the place for you. Ta-da! See? Amazing ka yung internet, no? If we were in, I think of it really as our silver lining and a blessing that despite us being in quarantine, we are still able to communicate and learn new skills through the internet. And me being able to do this is also a form of content creation. And I'm more than happy to share this with everyone. So, definitely... I'm happy to have you guys here. And you guys are saying finding your niche. So we'll definitely talk about finding your niche later. All right. So yeah, the internet is the place for you if you're either a content creator or a business person, business owner, business woman, a girl boss or a boy boss or any boss. So yeah. So this is something, if you were a part of the first talk, I showed these slides. But this is also, I really transformed my slides, right? Okay, Vladimir is asking a question. I like that question. I'll answer it later. So, these are just some facts that I'm going to show you guys very quickly, okay? In the Philippines, we have 107.3 million Filipinos. And there are 124.2 million mobile subscribers. Meaning, we have more than one SIM card. Whether that's Sun, that's Sun and Globe, or Sun and Smart. Unsan man mo dira? Ako Globe ko. I used to have Sun, but karen kay... I don't know. I, I got tired of having two SIM cards, so I just decided to just keep one. But yeah, there are 107.3 million people. 75 million of these Filipinos are using Facebook. 
11 million are on Instagram, 5 million are on Twitter, and we mostly spend around like 10 hours on the internet. So that's a lot of people. Those are millions of people that could potentially be your clients. Those are a million people who potentially could be watching your videos. So Bayhana, my Ang Bayhana made around 9 million views on my first episode where I was peeing, standing up, where I was showing you how to use the Go Girl. And that went that wasn't just limited to the Philippines, that was all over the world. So if you check the shares, the comments, you'll notice that there are so many people online. So whether you're selling skincare, you're selling clothes, there are millions of people that you could reach out to all over the world for your business or for your personal brand. So yeah, let's move on to the next slide, huh? So what does this mean? That you should really be on the internet. So you should be on the internet to promote yourself or your business. So if you are a business and you don't have social media yet, I really would suggest that you get social media as soon as possible especially like during this quarantine period it will definitely give you a project it will give you motivation and hopefully this segment that we're having right now is going to motivate you to want to create content or to want to work on the branding of your business and whatnot so yeah so it's important to be online especially if you're a business owner because Online marketing or content creation is a part of marketing and marketing is an essential for business. You market your business so that you can generate it into sales, right? Marketing and advertising are definitely essentials of a business. Of course, if you have a business and you don't tell anyone about it, how do you expect yourself to make sales? Sometimes some of us, we have a business but we're too like embarrassed or ashamed to show it off and there are very specific reasons why and i want to teach you today tonight how to do that how to feel a little bit more confident and putting out your business so that you can generate more sales so kanang it's actually a really it's a it's a very interesting process content creation or setting up your business it's not just creating a facebook page and then boom you have a business it's it's pretty interesting so i'm going to teach you the step by steps later Owning, a, owning or making content adds value to your brand and it allows you to stay relevant. So most of the time, um, let's just say my example during the last talk was Jollibee. So the way that Jollibee markets their businesses or their business, the way that Jollibee markets Jollibee <laughs> is so amazing to me. Kay. Kana ganing, it really sparks an emotion. Nga, Murag, when I watch the commercials of Jollibee, this is what I said the last time. When I watch the commercials of Jollibee, I don't feel like, oh my gosh, hungry keiko, I really want to eat Jollibee. No, I watch the commercials of Jollibee and I feel like, oh, this is a brand that is close to my heart. This is a brand that is mine. It is very Filipino. I love it. And that's like, it adds so much value Other to the aside from the fact that I want to eat Jollibee like maybe three days after I watch it. But then like, it just sparks an emotion and it adds so much value. As a content creator... Creating social media is a way to have an online diary. It's a creative outlet. It's an avenue to share your skills. There's a, it's your portfolio or it's your resume and it helps. Well, wrong spelling. Oh, share. It's char. <laughs> helps share information and it is a career option. So what do I mean by online diary? So for me, before I started creating content professionally, I started a an online blog. So I would write down my diary entries. I still have it until now, actually. Like when me and Paolo got married, I was writing blog entries. And that's my personal diary. Um, eventually, it went on to... It was my creative outlet. I was working. I was at school. And I wanted to have an outlet for me to like... Because I was always very like creative i'm not as creative as everyone else's but i would like to believe that i'm creative in my own ways and so having an online diary and then vlogs was a way for me to create memories and for me to feel a little bit of sanity in my life so especially now that we're in quarantine me creating vlogs is also a way for me not only to entertain but also to have memories of my life so we have the Bayhana youtube channel and i also have an isa vlog coming out um our first vlog is going to be tomorrow because tomorrow is my wedding anniversary. So mag shoot me tomorrow. <laughs> or we're gonna think we're gonna do something special. I'm gonna vlog it. I don't know. But that's really like my purpose for that is to have a place where I can keep my memories forever. 
aside from that, it's a portfolio or it's a resume. So for me, my talent, I would like to think that my talents, I don't know if you guys would agree, but maybe it's talking or I have a big personality which would be great for hosting or I love to do seminars like this. So me doing this is a portfolio. So most of the time when I apply for jobs online, Hi, Marky. Hi, Mia. Hi, Alan. Hi, Chalo. <laughs> Ni hi lang ko kadali. Um, so, most of the times, thank you, Jano. It is our first year anniversary. But, yeah. So, anyways, most of the time when I apply for jobs online, let's say Upwork, Philippine Jobs, I know a lot of us are trying to find jobs there. And I have found actually that having a blog and a vlog and like social media accounts has increased my chances of getting jobs as compared to let's say my friends who don't really have social media it has it's been a way for brands to find me because how else can i market myself as a i started as a fashion blogger um i still do fashion blogs because i love fashion but how else would people know how to find me if i did not have my social media diba? how would people know that i love to talk or that i was interested in hosting if i didn't have all my social media handles or all my social media platforms it helps me share share information very good spelling isa it helps me share information and it is a career option i get asked this a lot isa should i quit my job and be a content creator um well sometimes they say take the leap of faith sometimes they say don't i think that's really up to you but for me kai it it took a while for me to really take the jump but i did and then okay lang siya guys I mean, I'm happy. I could... It, we're all struggling right now. So, majulisud <laughs> lisud siya because of times. But you know, we're all gonna get through this together. Right? So, I'm gonna show you guys the next slide, alright? There. So, let me know in the comment section if you can recognize any of the brands that I am showing on the screen. Tinink! Tinink! Are you familiar with any of the brands? Hmm. I'm so interested if you guys can tell. Um, obviously, na ako dira no. Obviously, you can tell I'm there. Um, but I'm interested to see if you can recognize any of the other brands that are there, so we can have a discussion. Oh, Dove! See, Vladimir is saying, Dove. I wish I had a prize. I'm so sorry. I don't have a prize, but hugs and kisses are my prize. <laughs> Stephanie saying thank you for the tips. Yay! So. I'm gonna, yeah, Sunnies, yeah, very good acts. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> Participation, Casey Axie, I love you. All right, so I'm gonna talk about some of the brands that we have here, all right? So these are actually a mix of content creators, and we also have a mix of brands. So the very first one, oh, we have Dynamita here. Ang Nikanta Og, um, Cuatro Cantos is here. Hi, love, I love you. Yes. Oh, you guys can actually you really can tell. So we have Dove, we have Ladylike, we have Sunnies. The one at the bottom is actually Feminist from Instagram. We have the Lena Cup, which is a menstrual cup, and then you have me. So these are very women centered brands. And the reason why I really chose these examples is because they have a very distinct type of branding which you can take you don't necessarily have to use everything that they do but you can take bits and pieces of the things that you actually like about these brands so this is a very special presentation that i created i really created it for the Bayhana group good because i wanted it for us to be relatable you know you could see the brands recognize them and think of it like how does dove market themselves they don't just market themselves as soap or shampoo or unsa pa may lain. what else does dove sell they sell lotion lotion shampoo sure kana but the thing that i recognize about them is that this is a brand that really talks about beauty with whether it's on the inside or on the outside i like it more when they're talking about beauty on the inside but i see brand i mean i see the dove the brand dove and i think oh it has a very distinct branding it's for women or men who want to feel beautiful. Ladylike. Ladylike is actually a 
YouTube company of BuzzFeed. It's a sister company or it's a sub company of BuzzFeed that talks about women experiences. It's very much like by Hana. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration from BuzzFeed and from Ladylike because they do a lot of things that are very interesting. They talk about they have done the Ping Standing Up Challenge. They have done a lot of crazy things. So if you like content like mine, you can definitely check out Ladylike. Uh, we have Sunny's. Sunny's has a lot of brands under their, their belt, but I chose Sunny's face because it's very distinct when you see the packaging you're like oh that's Sunny's diba right? um whether it's lipstick it's lip what else do they sell their cheek tints everything when you see it you're like oh that has to be Sunny's it looks very much like Sunny's and in fact when we see makeup that looks like Sunny's what do we say is that Sunny's or it looks like Sunny's diba right? so it has a very distinct branding Feminist is also an Instagram creator. So, see, they're actually an Instagram page and they have amazing, amazing, amazing content over there. And you know, obviously, from the name itself, you get what you expect when you go on their page. It's a lot of women empowerment empowerment content so if you guys love that type of stuff and I'm sure we all do I love it so much make sure that you're following them the next one is Lena cup so if you haven't heard of Lena cup it's a menstrual cup I did a video about them on my second episode and then if you go on their page it's very clean minimalist it has like a very distinct look also which is the brand because a Lena cup is supposed to is meant to be small compact discreet clean so that's exactly what you can expect aside from the product itself also from their branding and then you have me i'm a potato but you know when you say by hana you know exactly what it what it is hi gian yes dj's asking if it's buzzfeed it is nika very good nick you actually got three out of five yay audience participation i love so there so all right so you're inspired you're like yeah i have an idea now I'm reg- as i'm talking about it, it's like yeah i think i can do this all right so where do you begin so i'm on my next slide for those who are on are not on their phones and we're just listening but can I, yeah you can actually do that you can put your phone down and then listen and then i'll let you know when i change the screen and then you'll find out then you'll see the new slide so where do you begin one Decide on the content that you want to create, whether it's for your brand or your business or for yourself as a brand. So I want to say this to you right now, whether you are a content creator or you're a brand, but this is specifically for content creators. If you want to be a creator, my most honest piece of advice right now is to consider yourself and to position yourself as a brand. For me, I treat Isa Please as a business. Um, Isa Please is my identity. I treat her, I've done everything that I have to do in terms of business for Isa Please, the same way we do for Bayhana. So we set it up as a brand because even when Isa Please wasn't earning, I was using the law of attraction to say, I want to treat myself as a legitimate brand, but people will also treat me as a brand and respect me as a creator and as a brand. So I was able to do that. So now that you have that, we're gonna create a brand book and i'm i'm so excited because i actually gave i actually taught axi who's with us right now she's listening um i taught her about creating brand books but i wasn't really able to expound it so i want to expound it today and this is the first time that i'm actually showing you a brand book and of course for the bayhanas i wanted to show you my brand book for bayhana so even before bayhana actually no not even before um we decided to rebrand by Hana. Now that I'm taking a break, we are doing a little bit of rebranding and I really wanted to show that to you. A brand book, yeah. So I'll show you what a brand book is, all right? So this is a brand book. I switched the sides for those who are not looking, but I suggest that you really look at these because I'm going to explain them. So now you see four photos. You have one on the upper right. It says the by Hana story. And if you take a look at it, you'll see it says... A lot of information about by Hana. Next, beside it, you have typeface, which is you can see some name, rug fonts, nylorgam, ipsum, the color palette, ingana. Then, at, if you look at the bottom, you have logos and collaterals. And then you have the next logos and collaterals, which are basically pictures. So, Murag, it makes you think now that you're looking at it, what what is a brand book? AJ is asking, brand book? Whoa, ni buto mong aircon nga naman siya. Okay. Anyway, sorry about that. So, what is a brand book? A brand book is a visual handbook or guide of your brand. 
all the big companies have it you know if your brand let's say you can actually search them online if you search and i love doing this for fun just because like it's so interesting to me you can actually search facebook brand book or facebook or skype brand book it's basically a visual handbook of your brand and it allows you to have a distinct and recognizable identity and it sets you up for expansion so let's say for example you are um let's say you are a clothing brand and you are let's say um let's say aj you own aj bookstore bookstore na lang, all right let's say you're aj bookstore and you have one store and you do so well and then you think oh my gosh someone wants to franchise having a brand book has already set you up to franchise because you can give this this is actually for your own personal use but it is a visual handbook of your brand so you would eventually just use that and give it to wh whoever would like the franchise and they have the guidelines of how they would use your logos um what is the right way to market what are words that you would use and whatnot if you search online you can actually find a lot of brand books and nobody taught me how to make a brand book i just um, I just really learned how to make a brand book on my own and I used it for by Hana. So as you can see here, the first one says by Hana story. It's basically like a description of what by Hana is. So this is very useful for me so that when I'm talking to brands who want to work with me, they're like, what is by Hana? And then I'll tell them by Hana talks about this, this and that. See, it's so amazing. AJ saying it's amazing. If ever I have graphic artists that I'm able to work with in the future, I'll tell them. This, these are the only fonts that you can use for my brand. These are the only colors that you can use for my brand. So eventually, even making this slide, you can tell nga, oh, this is by Hana, you know, or this is Sunny's, or this is AJ Bookstore because it is so distinct with the way that it looks and stuff like that. Especially, it's so important when you're a brand and you're expanding to have like logos it's eventually it gets onto like dimensions so if you guys check the bottom this is actually my proposal for my new by hana logo let me know if you like it and let me know what you see because <laughs> i really want to know what people see when they look at it and let me know if you like the logo so that's something so murag um when you eventually if by hana comes out with merchandise you can see the logo and you'll be like oh that's by hana or these are the only color variations that by hana can have so it's basically like that you can use that whether for yourself or for your business Business. and it's very important for you to have a distinct identity i think how, in my personal opinion it really helps you a lot as well because it just allows people to recognize you right away and it should be very distinct and we'll talk about we'll talk about that in a little bit hi jl i have my sangai here <laughs> she's listening from i think london or asagani <laughs> kaji hi thanks for listening so yeah it really helps so much so i just use if you guys are wondering what i used to create this before when i didn't even have this like i'd honestly just use a pen and paper okay i would like like the, i would start drawing scribbling on a piece of paper and then eventually i created it on excel or if no not excel keynote or even powerpoints yeah that's really just where i did it <laughs> Vladimir is saying it looks like the girl from all the girls I've loved before. Yes, I've been told that I look very much like Laura Jean. <laughs> so I'm gonna go on to the next slide. So that was basically a brand book, all right? So the next is once you're able to identify your platform, I mean, once you're able to identify your brand or your brand book, everything else becomes easier. I'm gonna go back a little bit, huh? When you're able to identify your brand book, when you're able to set that up, it makes it easier for you to create your visuals. Like let's say all your photos, even your menus, your services, everything will now have a cohesive look because you've already identified um, looks that you want. You've already identified photo pegs or kanamangaingana. It just makes everything so much easier for you moving forward. So let's say um, your logo, it'll make your um, banner easier and you're just set up. You don't find yourself constantly changing it. Like sometimes when you're starting your brand, you don't really know what you want. So you're going back and forth, back and forth. You can't really decide what you want. So creating a brand book really streamlines everything for you. The next is um, there. So once you're able to 
um, create your brand book. Then you identify your platforms. What are the skills that I want to share? What are the brands that I want to put online? So for different skill sets, there are different platforms for you. If you like to write, if you are a content creator, if you want to apply for SEO jobs, if you want to apply for blog writing jobs, then obviously having a blog will help. If you're if you want to apply for blogging jobs, sometimes they hire ghostwriters or copywriters. My Anna, having a blog is a really great kanang resume or portfolio. So a lot of times I get I apply for online jobs as well. Or during the times that I did, I would really just send in my my different blogs and it would help um blogging or website creation is technically an online diary it's a catalog it's ideal for seo searches seo is search engine optimization I'll talk about that in a little bit businesses and providing information so uh, i'm i have a question for you this requires um audience participation you can reply with either a reaction or you can reply with like a comment down below but during this time that you that we were all under home quarantine did you ever research or google search a business if it was open did you check out their facebook fan page if they're selling did you google have you ever googled kanang is this bakery um does this bakery deliver or in ana let me know you can send heart reactions or any reaction will do Feel free to do it. See, AJ saying yes. Yes, I did. So, I just need one yes. And I'm seeing like reactions. So, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the audience participation. So, blogging or website creation is so important. Especially if you're a small business. See, I'm getting yeses. See? is see first thing i searched is vape shops yes way right so especially during this period for us you we were like what are groceries that are open right now so you we were searching that we were searching for suppliers like let's say computer shops because obviously i've been streaming we were like oh is this open do they deliver and stuff like that so if you have a website or a blog or even a kanang facebook page which is technically a micro blog even it's so helpful especially for your consumers so imagine if you had a business and um i you, you had a potential customer who didn't know that you were online or that you were functioning right now because it was because you weren't posting it online that's like a handful of that's like a put that's like a loss honestly and it's so it's such a waste especially for times like this where every single centavo counts so if you haven't if you own a business and this is really opening up your eyes to the possibilities and i hope that after this talk you are really really um motivated to start your own blog your own website go on wordpress.com it's free or even to start your own social media page facebook facebook i would really suggest facebook because the majority as you saw on the slide earlier there are 70 million filipinos using facebook so that's the number one platform in the philippines right now it's facebook so make sure that if you have a business or if you are creating content and you want to be seen that you're on facebook so obviously that's the reason why i choose to upload on facebook that's why i have this talk on facebook because because I know that it's the most easiest available to everyone out there. So yeah. Next is a vlog. Who here watches vlogs? Me. I hope that you guys watch the Baihana vlogs and that you will watch it when it comes out. <laughs> so video diaries. They are basically vlogs, video logs. They are meant for entertainment or information. They're great for forming in emotional connections. Water breaks up, guys. So... <clears throat> Entertainment and information. A lot of us watch vlogs. I think vlogs are really great if you have something to teach. Like, let's say we have see I forgot her name, but I recently shared her video here. She was sketching. She was doing the fast katong sketches, right? So that's a way for her to show off her talent. Um, maybe eventually someone can hire her to draw for them. Ingana. Um, yeah, Sasa saying I love content from Bisaya content creators and let me know why sas i'm so curious like um i want to know what are the things that you love the most about sabuano content creators of course so i can tell my friends also <laughs> but um drink your water <laughs> am i allowed to say the b word of course i am 
drink your water, bitch. <laughs> All right, so um, there. So it's great for entertainment and information. Personally, I watch a lot of vlogs when it comes to like how tos, how to cook this, how to do that. So kanang you should really consider the things. Like let's say if you're a singer, how would you create content? Like would you teach someone to sing? Um, or would you show off your talents, write a song perhaps, or just really have a vlog where you're singing your favorite songs? That's something to consider. Yay, Kimmy Kim is here! I think Kim has actually joined one of my um, segments before, but this is a lot better than the one last time. Hi, Karina! Next is podcasting. So, um, podcasting is basically this session, what we're doing, but no visuals. So, actually, I didn't create a... Pod, I have a podcast. It's called Isa Talks. And the reason why I did that is because I think there are a lot of amazing um, artists all around the world that I ha that I am connected to. And I would really want for us to get to know them on a personal level, whether they're artists or whether they're business owners. I really wanted to have um, a diary of all the amazing conversations that I had, that I was having. Um, so I created a podcast. And technically, I am also going to take out the audio of this class and then turn it into a podcast. So it's really meant for like learning, entertainment. My favorite podcasts are the ones that are funny. Because like for me, when I'm driving, it's nice that you're, you have something to listen to where you're laughing. And then like when you're talking to someone, I mean, it's nice when you're learning. So I listen to a lot of TED Talks because it really motivates me. So check out those podcasts. If you need podcasts to listen to, let me know. But I mentioned it in a previous podcast. I mean, a previous by Hannah episode as well. Um, and then we have live sessions or streaming. So technically, guys, I'm so sorry if it's distracting you. It's really itchy. I don't know why. But anyways... A live session is technically what we're doing right now. What Alam Garcia has been doing on by. Um, who else are your favorite? Um, that's okay, Anz. Who else are your other favorite live streamers? We have kanang. Most of the time, streamers are associated with gamers. But technically, streaming is if you're on a live, if you're doing a live stream, it's technically a stream. And this is a great authentic way to show live reactions, opinions, and provide information entertainment. So. For me, if there was ever going to be a video of me unboxing something, I would prefer to do it live so that you could see my genuine reaction. I want, I never want to lie to my viewers. So I would say, oh, okay, if a brand would want me to do an unboxing, I would suggest let's do a live stream because I want them to see my most honest, raw reaction. Because if it's a video blog, but uh, it could be honest, but then sometimes you they would even question like how authentic your action actually is. Like how would you think what do you think of that? Oh, DJ saying Alodia. But ba mag upload ng podcast through phone? Yes. Um I'll have to get back to you on that. I think you can actually. I haven't tried because I'm always on a desktop, but I'll check. Okay. I'll get back to you on that. So <clears throat> Now that you've already identified your platforms, you're thinking, ah, okay, so you can be more than one, okay? Technically, guys, I do everything. I blog, I have a website, I vlog, I podcast, I stream. You can do so many of these things, right? So as I'm talking and going along, you're probably thinking, oh, I need to get this. I need to be on that. Oh, yeah, it would be nice to do that. So identify your platforms. So now we have Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, WordPress, Libsyn. So, yes, Vlad, I'll teach you how to do a podcast. We'll definitely talk about that in a bit. So, Facebook, obviously, I was just going on Facebook because 70 million Filipinos are on Facebook. If you want the wider audience, that's the place to be. YouTube, TikTok, a lot of Filipinos are going on TikTok, and I love TikTok. Um, Twitter, Twitch, WordPress, and Libsyn. So uh, I think ang dilik kayo familiar. The ones that are not super familiar here are Twitch, WordPress, and Libsyn. So Twitch is where you would go to stream, which is like gaming mostly. It's really mostly gaming. Hi Sky. Um, WordPress is where you would go to make a website. So or not a website. Um. Uh, a blog that you can turn into a website then um libsyn's aj saying her memings are on tiktok i love the memings and libsyn is where i upload my podcast so actually in order for me to upload on libsyn you have to pay i think i pay five uh i think i pay 
ten depende siya on the memory that you're taking up but it's basically like a website where you would upload your content your podcast and then they're the ones that sh- that kanang spread it out through i iTunes, Spotify. So that's why my podcasts are spread out all over because I have a host or I have a website that I upload on that takes care of everything for me. So I get asked that a lot. Hi. Um, where I can, how I'm able to get on Spotify and how I'm able to go get on like all those music streaming apps. So it's because I am on Libsyn and it's a paid service. I think right now because I'm so keen on the quality of the audio. I think honestly I pay like one seven, which is honestly an investment because I don't have sponsors, which is how you would potentially make money on a podcast. But I do it anyways because I love it. Um, I think there's actually a free, um, there's a free hosting website for your podcast. Let me know. I'll let me know, Vlad, or for those who want the podcast, I will add you to that group. Okay, I'm not like a pro when it comes to podcasting, so yeah. But I heard there are free hosts. I just don't use it because I'm so used to Libsyn. Yeah, ako nang nangyantos. So yeah. So once you have identified which platform you want to be on, take the time to learn and understand how each platform works and how you can make it work for you. So. I won't go into detail for every single platform, but as we oh, you know what? I forgot to add Instagram. Instagram should be here, but for every single platform, there are different trends. There are different um, kanang. There are different trends. There are different personalities. Is the right term? Um, yeah. So for Facebook, obviously we know that seventy million people are on it. It's it's very condensed. So it depends on you how you would market. Like you would have um, your tone, ingana. So we know that Facebook is a great place for like funny short videos, right? Or kanang just funny content, whatever. Or where by Hana, where you can learn and stuff like that. So it really depends on like you really have to like target it to your audience for Facebook. Obviously for Instagram, it's just pictures. And Instagram has like this, um, their culture on Instagram, the, that's the term I want to say, culture. The culture on Instagram is they really like cohesive feeds or pretty feeds or pretty pictures and stuff like that. But it's been changing since the ECQ. So that's a breath of fresh air. YouTube is obviously for creating content, whether it's for like personal vlogs, learning vlogs, entertainment vlogs, stuff like that. TikTok is like for short videos. So you want to learn, you want to learn how it is. Like, let's say if you want to go viral on TikTok, I heard that you can upload three times a day. You should learn what are the typical editing styles. So on my TikTok, I have a couple of videos that did very well. I would take audio from another person. I would dub it, but then I would twist it in my own way. So I would make it very kanang something that's funny for me and relatable for me and apparently a lot of people can relate to it as well dancing for me is fun but um there are so many dancers on tiktok so i want to be able to stand out so that's why i mix dancing acting dubbing and stuff like that but obviously when you go to mine you know oh he's just talking about women stuff see there's a lot of tiktok on ig now yeah that's what dj is saying i agree because most of my posts lately have been tiktok Follow me on TikTok, Amisa, please. And then Twitter. Twitter is also very different. Like, the culture on Twitter is very different. I'm not very familiar with it, honestly. But if you want to choose whichever platform you choose, really take the time to understand it. Understand what time you should upload. Understand um, what how people react to certain posts. Because some things that go well on Twitter, I mean on Instagram, don't do well on Facebook and vice versa. So, you really just need to understand it. And I can't. I won't really go into super detail, but you can ask me in the comment section later huh? if you have questions about certain platforms. So yeah, there. Next, this is so important for me. Oh, Chari is asking what's my um, TikTok. It's Isa, please. All my socials are actually Isa, please. Guys, I'm sakit man ako likod, Char. Iguang na ko. All right. So now that you have created a brand book, and you have already identified the platform that you want to be on, my next piece of advice is to create a social media calendar. Um, 
Yes. Jano is quoting my if they don't feed you, finance you, or fuck you, then their opinion doesn't matter. That actually was not my original sound bite. It was someone else's. And then I transformed it. I dubbed it into something that was very mine. So the reason why I said my, num- my third tip, this is before you start uploading on any of your social medias guys ha huh? is to start is to make a social media calendar and this is because i don't know if a lot of you guys have felt this especially in your own businesses where you're like oh let's start an instagram post and then i'll post the logo and then it's like oh opening soon and then after a week you're like oh i don't know what to upload and then you're rushing to upload another picture If you notice, some of your favorite Instagrammers will upload pictures from like years ago. Like they have so many back, fo- they have so many pictures that they have in storage and stuff like that. So this is because of that. So <laughs> number three, my third tip is to make a social media calendar. So what is a social media calendar? I'm going to show you. This is this is actually something that I created for a client of mine who recognizes this brand. It's Squeeze Fruit Jar. I miss a uh, juice bar. I miss them so much. And they they're located at Sugbo Mercado. Check them out. They are fresh fruits. I don't handle their social medias anymore, but I used to and I loved it so much and I really miss them so much. I can't wait for ACQ to be done so that we can start drinking again because I miss the juice. But This is something that I create for my for my clients. If I'm handling a brand or whether even for myself. And this is something that I do. I practice religiously. Well, not for myself. I'm a little bit more lenient. But for clients, yes, I'm ve- I practice this very religiously. Even for our own brands. So what I would do if I had a client or even for my personal brands is I would create a marketing timeline or a social media calendar so what that is is i would identify the days when i would need to upload so obviously um squeeze is open on weekdays diba no the i weekends squeeze is open on weekends because it's located at sugu mercado so obviously if i would to post on a monday it wouldn't really be effective diba so i would identify the days where it's best to upload and then i would create a calendar so if you can look at your screen right now it says this was in august because this was like way before by hana it was even launched so on wednesday i would post this and i would create the logo or the graphic that i wanted on thursday i would post this and it even has the times it's 9 30 p.m and then i would have a sample caption i would have a geotag geotags are basically like check in like i checked in at subo mercado or it park and stuff like that and the tags and these are very specific tags for me to be able to entice a um sales so more than if your purpose is to get likes then yes you would have like kind of mga follow for follow like for like something like that but if you're there because you want to turn in sales sometimes engagement doesn't really matter or the number of likes it's really you really want people to say more now oh i saw you on instagram because i checked out this hashtag so make your hashtags very specific to your targeted clientele so for me oh angela's asking is 9 30 more effective than 6 p.m i'll answer that in a bit huh but um So I would create something like this, whether it's for my brand, for personal use, and stuff like that. Because, para ganit guys, like the reason why I do this is so that I have a pe- I have peace of mind throughout the week. I do this at the last week of the month, and then I implement it obviously at the start of the month of the next month, and this gives me the peace of mind so that I'm never rushing to create content creating a marketing timeline or a social media calendar allows me to do any and every photo shoot that i need to do it allows me to get the approval from my clients and show them hey this is what i have in mind what do you think it allows me to collaborate with my with my client and they are able to tell me like oh isa i don't like this or can you consider this instead hi Malaya Makara Egg! Malaya is here! Hi, Ma! <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Malaya is here. Ikugko, guys. Malaya is here. The amazing, the one and only Malaya. Hi! <laughs> so, yeah, so... Wow, ko na si Malaya. I'm so shy. So, yeah. So, this is something that I would create. So, if you're a business... 
I really would suggest doing this. It allows you to plan out your promotions, your marketing stuff. Like let's say if payday is on the 15th, you'll be like, oh, I should start marketing on the 11th. And this is how I would do it. I have to post this. This is going to be my poster so that you are able to plan in advance. Um, whether if it's something that you have to set aside funds for or if you have to spend a little bit more time on. Um, yeah, so even Vladimir is saying, sometimes I run out of ideas. So nice, Judan Calendar. Yes, I really do agree. For me personally, what I do is, I, but you guys can't see it because my screen is so small. Like even on my phone, I can't see myself. But um, what I would do is I would set different times on my phone as alarms. Like 9 o'clock, upload this. 10 o'clock, upload this and then my nose is so itchy and then sometimes i would have like if i want to upload on tiktok um i would just write down whenever i'm going through my tiktoks and i'll find an idea i'll save it and then i'll write down a thought that i have so i can when i have time to plan it or to do it execute it i will just have to look at my notes all right so i'll show you i'll show you it later in a little bit I use, Andrea is saying, I use preview app for my Instagram, but it's not like this ka planned, lol. I'm so, I'm so organized, especially when it comes to businesses. For myself, honestly, I'm a little bit more lenient. Like, um, I just have like a lot of stock photos, but Murag, for clients, I think it's very important. For businesses, it's so important. And it shows professionalism. It shows that you're prepared. It shows that you really thought about it, diba. Right? So I have, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about that. So yeah, it even says here, oh, wait, let's go back a little bit. Um, platforms, IG and FB. So Instagram and Facebook because those were the platforms that we had agreed on. They only wanted Instagram and Facebook and I was like, sure, that's it. If they wanted somewhere else, I would do it as well. All right, there. So there, that's a social media calendar. And if you are really like set, in stone about creating content or even marketing your brand i really highly suggest that you do that and you can see how much it changes the way that you run your business or your brand and we have all the time to do it right now because we're in quarantine <laughs> so yeah the next step is to develop your skills so you can do this while you're already creating content and stuff like that but these are technically a very it's a list of the skills that you would have to have when you're creating content and if malaya is watching this she will agree so you'll have to have social media management skills that is handling your different platforms whether it's facebook it's instagram it's twitter kana social media management understanding the trends and the ways that your clients use your use their social media so that you can appeal to them and get a sale right photography photography is so important instagram everyone on instagram is uh, technically a photographer or has some photography skills, right? Um, see, Vladimir saying, Nadri tabang ang quarantine. So, quarantine has really helped. Videography. Obviously, if you're a vlogger, um, you are, you have videography skills. Even on TikTok, you have videography skills. The way that they transition, it's so amazing. Those are really, um, stuff like that. Wait, very quickly, Andrea's asking, what if kalat imong branding? So, that's, what if you're, um, branding is like a mix a mix of a lot of things like motherhood, travel, and business. You have to cut it to just one. Honestly, um, and I would not because you yourself are a brand. You just have to do it in a way that people would really recognize because Isa Please is, a, is also a mishmash of different things. It's technically myself. And people, lang they know nga, I think my voice online is just someone who's very funny, who does weird things. So people know na, oh, Isa does that. So you can, you should be who you are, who you want to be. Don't think that you have to like cut anything or like just stick to one thing because you'll never just be a mother. You'll never just travel all the time. So it can be you. But it's important nga, where people know who you are, Jun. You know, it's sta you stand out and stuff like that. I think it really helps, you know. Yes. So you have videography, you have graphic design, like when you're creating like your um, posters and stuff like that. Don't worry, guys. I know it sounds crazy. There's so many things, but I am teaching different tips and tricks, tricks for this. All right. Then you have copywriting or just writing content in general, marketing and advertising, psychology. I bet you guys weren't thinking of psychology. <laughs> um, communication skills, story writing and storyboarding. And then you have 
tech support my favorite of them all tech support so these are basically so you guys can take screenshots of this if you want to ha feel free if you share it with your friends by all means it would be my honor for you to share it with anyone and everyone who needs it all right so these are technically the skills that you need but you don't need to have them right now i started creating vlogs when i was in college which was like eight nine years ago I, it was a while but it was only until now that i really focused on it and really developed my own distinct style when it comes to like editing and when it comes to like storytelling and stuff like that so don't feel the pressure to have these skills right away but know and keep an open mind to learn these skills so for example like right now they say na oh there's going to be a free um, social media class, take it, you know, there's gonna be a free photography class, take it, open your mind, the thing that I say up until now is knowledge is power, and that's because you can never have or learn too much or too little, so that's why knowledge is power, next is there, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about social media management, so when you're on social media, try to understand the habits of your audience and your target audience. If you're catering to mothers, he's playing Call of Duty right now. <laughs> I will be playing after this also, and I'll be streaming it. So yeah, um, try to understand the habits of your audience and your target audience. So if again, if you're a mother and you're targeting yourself to other mothers as well, consider the times that they're online. If you're targeting students, of course, like, Think of the times that students are online, whether it is um, when they're commuting, when they're on their phones. Just really try to put yourself in that situation. If you need to do the research and actually talk to someone, um, do it by all means. Oh yeah, DJ is saying there's a photography class on Ready to Adult on, on April 30, so join that. I will put Ready to Adult in the bottom so that you guys can see. Next. Try to create posts that you would that would catch attention. Think of yourself as a consumer. So when you're making posters, think of something. Ika, when you see a poster that you like, take a picture of it and be like, this is how my next poster is going to look like. Or this is how I want my poster to look like. Because it has the elements that I like. Everything should be short and simple. It's always like that. Next is... Um, make it short and sweet. That's there. Uh, Sasa saying, oh my god. <laughs> so, Murag, it's so it, like when you're doing social media management, you really have to think of yourself as a consumer. For me, I have, I always like to say, holidays and weekends, I am working the most. I do not take a break when people take breaks. My breaks are actually Mondays and Tuesdays because that's when people are working and they're not really on their phones. But Saturdays, um, weekends I'm so busy and on holidays I'm even busier because people are on their phone and I want them like to see my content so I work extra hard during those days there so you know just some tips and tricks there so photography videography and design these are so I love this so much I love doing this guys these are visual guides these are already tips and tricks guys ha huh? so Create visual guides, create storyboards. So this, what you're seeing right now on this screen is actually a storyboard. I do this all the time because it's so fun for me. Ako mang good, I have, I, I, in my opinion, personally, I have like a wild imagination and sometimes it's so hard for me to streamline my thoughts. So sometimes I create visual storyboards or you can create a mood board bakaha if you want. Um, sometimes storyboards, if you don't know how to draw, you can just... It, nobody's gonna look at your storyboard. It's yours. It doesn't matter, but I really make storyboards for fun. So I do that and I love it. Um, pegs. Come up with photo pegs. So recently, Diba guys, I showed you that I was able to create a photo. I was able to do a photo shoot inside the house. And I saw that on TikTok and I recreated it and I created my own TikTok. So that was my peg. Sometimes what I do whenever I have a photo shoot with someone, especially if you also, if you're a business owner and you want to have a photo shoot with a photographer and a model always present them with pegs if you are a model and someone asks hey can i shoot you can i take your pictures always agree on a peg don't like for me it helps them i'll tell them a, a peg can be 
even a piece of clothing or a makeup look or a, a location in the house. So I have a photo shoot coming up. It's going to be virtual. And our agreement is that I would send him different areas of the house and then I would show him different clothes that I would match it with. And then that's our peg. So it's really just like a visual guide of how you would execute something. The next is a script. Scripts. <laughs> Vladimir is saying, Ganahan jud ko mag model ay. So, yes, Vlad, you can be your own model. Ironically, I became, I'm not even really a model. Most of the time, it's really like ambassadorship because obviously people would say, and that's an, uh, that's actually a really good by Hannah episode idea short girls become models. So, yeah, I really think that you can be a model. I don't think it, I believe it. You really can be a model. And these are ways that you can do it. If you have photo shoots with your friends or at home, use this. Hi, Jam! Next is to create scripts. So, on by Hana, a lot of the episodes are scripted. It's not scripted in a way that kind of the reactions are fake and whatnot, but we have it's not just scripts it's guides mostly it's storyboards it's visual guides sometimes i will really plan obviously i plan out my introduction and my in my conclusions because i want the thoughts to be clearer scripts doesn't mean that your reactions are inauthentic or that you memorize lines sometimes scripts are really just guides for you and that's definitely something that helps me a lot so um i'm releasing a video coming out that is called um yeah, Chari saying, medyo di ko na gets ang peg, ma'am. Parang idea ba yun or yung limitation? Oh, a peg is like, it's basically an idea. It's a visual guide. It's something that you would use as inspiration. So that's what a peg is. Peg is, it's actually an English term, but I think Bisayas use it more often. I'm so sorry. But that's basically what a peg is. It's basically like a guide. Hi, Kate. So, scripts, yeah. So, just to show you, just to let you guys know, I'm coming out with a video next week. It's how to look better during Zoom calls or during live streams like this. So, what I did was, I really created a script for it. My introduction was, um, hi guys. Murag, what was it? So, with the current situation right now, it's hard for us to create, um, to communicate and it's challenging the way that we communicate with one another. But through these tips and tricks, I am able to blah, 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 blah. So, the reason why you want to create a script is because sometimes, which happens to me a lot, is I will have an idea and then I, my introduction will reach up to 10 minutes and then I will have to edit it down to like one minute. So, actually having a script sometimes really helps. So that's a guide. Here are some helpful tools if you're online and you want to learn certain skills. So if you want to create posters, thumbnails, this presentation will... Oh, see, DJ is saying, I love how Will Dasso does his introduction and outro. Hi, D. Um, so yeah, Will does has does have an amazing intro and outro the reason why they're able to create introductions like that is because they really plan it out a lot of the things that you see online take so much work like i don't just film a video one day on tuesday and upload it the next day it takes weeks sometimes to edit so yeah don't feel bad if it takes you a while to edit stuff so yeah so canva canva is actually a free app that you can use on your phone or you can use on a desktop or a laptop any device that you have and i was able to create this slide this presentation through canva so i was able to like tweak it up a little bit to make it more um more personalized for myself but canva is amazing if you want to create your thumbnails there if you want to create your posters or invites everything you can do it on canva and it's free so if you never heard of canva you should definitely check it out because i use it for our businesses as well i'm trying to find a comfortable position see kimmy kimmy is saying kimmy kim is saying useful kayo canva is very useful i'm trying to translate it um that's what she used when she was in college. So I use that now. I use it. I use it for this presentation. I use it for the, um, for the poster of this one. I use Canva and I love it. See, Axie's saying I love Canva. See, you have to try it. It's free. It's free and it's so amazing. You have to try out Canva. Next, this is Unfold. So Unfold is an app. If you're wondering how you can get interesting, um, Instagram stories your thumbnails and stuff like that for your instagram stories it's very um see um dj saying she uses photoshop switch to canva it's so much better uh, not better but it's so much quicker um if you feel like you need kanang if if you feel like you 
are running out of like inspiration and you don't really know how like a certain thing should look you go on canva and you have inspiration and you can take it over to photoshop if you want if there's something you can't do on canva you can definitely do it on photoshop but i save so much time on canva so yeah next going back this is unfold it's an app everything i'm saying I will mention if it's free or not, but this is basically for your Instagram stories. If you want to make your Instagram stories look cooler, you can use Unfold. Next is Unum. If you are um, a business owner or a content creator and you want to streamline your photos or you want to have a place from your social media calendar, you can upload them in advance on Unum and then you can arrange them in a way that it will give you, it will remind you when to upload. So mine is set at nine o'clock. Yes, Unfold is free. Yes, it's free. So again, Unum, it reminds you of the times. It lets you know the engagement. It everything. If you are handling accounts on Instagram, Unum is a great app. And the the joke is, the reason why it's called Unum is because Unum, Unum, money mo siya og upload. <laughs> I, I can't see your reactions, but... That's a very funny joke to me and follow made it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but Anam is technically, it's a free app to use. There. Lightroom. I edit all my photos on Lightroom and it's free to use. It's, um, I know you can buy like presets and stuff on Lightroom and that's amazing. But I have figured out uh, my own specific way of how I like, Hala, Tita Natsumi laughed at my joke. Thank you, Tita. <laughs> Feeling close kay ko no nagtita ko. Ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> Yay! Ni laugh mo sa kon joke! I love it! <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh. Na overwhelm ko sa reactions niya sa kon joke. Char. Saka joke ni Paolo. Ani. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Lightroom is free to use and it's a way that you can edit your application, uh, your photos. So, um, <laughs> So, yeah, see, DJ is saying Lightroom is life. So, I use that to edit all my photos. I just, for the record, ha, I don't manipulate my photos, like Photoshop it to make me look whiter, to make me look like um, more hamis na skin. You can actually see in a lot of my photos that they're super, like, not edited in that way. I like to edit in a way nga I just bring up the brightness, change the colors. I like my feed to be colorful and bright and stuff like that. So, Lightroom is amazing for that. Um, before it used to be VSCO, but then like Visco is such like a mood, a mood that I don't have. So I don't really use Visco, but you can use it if you want. It's also free. Then you have iMovie. Actually, guys, I need your help on this one because I do not edit my videos on an Android phone. So I also don't edit on on an iPhone, I don't have an iPhone, but when I was using an iPhone, I did edit a little bit on iMovie because it was so easy. But for Android, I don't really have a lot of recommendations or any recommendations for a video editing app. So if you can leave that in the comment section, please do. Um, and I'll try it out. I don't really edit on my phone other, other than TikTok, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, put your Android video editing suggestions in the comment section and let's do it iMovie is only free if you have an iphone or an apple device unfortunately but yeah try vn so there next is obs so the how i'm able to do this stream is through obs it's a free app to download as well that means open broadcasting system and then for my streaming for games it's stream labs ang difference ani if you're gonna stream for games stream labs allows you to be more interactive with your audience like if someone follows you um stream labs has an app or has a feature that people can go I zombie zombie so if you've seen my streams every time someone chats you can see it it's more interactive but obs is how i'm able to do this and then stream labs is what i use for um my streams on my gaming app or on my gaming channel so these are canva is on your phone and on a laptop or on a laptop device Plano um this is Unfold, Unum, Lightroom, iMovie, these are on your phone and OBS and Streamlabs are on your laptops or desktops there. So I have those things. I have a desktop, laptop, and computer. So yeah, there. Kanang next is psychology. So this I think is very important and interesting, um, especially if you're trying to build your brand. And I really hope that this helps a lot of you if you're trying to figure out your branding here. 
It's so simple. And I just take a screenshot of it or you can actually find it on online. So use psychology to your favor. So if you can see, actually they do have certain colors have or spark certain emotions. When you see a specific color, I really highly suggest if you're building a brand to consider this. Like let's say if you notice when it comes to food most of the brands they they use the color red and orange and there's a specific reason for that because it entices an app your appetite or because it it sparks this emotion when it comes to spas most of the time it's it's white it's kanang very neutral colors when it comes to for some reason well you know i don't really think that pink is limited to women but pink is associated with feminine black is kanang darker colors are also associated with like kanang heavier more iso brands like let's say gaming or let's say like boy brands or like blue it's very like manly but it depends on the shade and the hue of course so if you're coming up with a brand if you're thinking of like the brand that you want definitely yes i'll post it i'll definitely post it on by hana dj is asking so Um, Jason's asking if I would prefer iPhone or Android. Actually, I don't really have a preference when it comes to devices. W- whatever I have, honestly, because if I can't afford it, I can't be choosy. That's what I think. So yeah. Um, but I I'm using Huawei. What's up with your phone? Huawei ng tulog kabuk camera at the back. I don't know what phone that is. It's I think it's a Y9. I'm P. So whatever I don't know Paulo gave it to me <laughs> it was a gift so I don't really like I'm not super techy when it comes to, I'm not picky when it comes to devices I'll take whatever I'm more on performance and if it gets the job done then I'm fine but yeah so use psychology to your advantage when you're thinking about things about your brand so for Bayhana I really like much, a little bit like feminine ish not really feminine I wouldn't say feminine because I don't believe like a color is associated with femininity but I like kaning mga maroon like very darker shades basically mixed with lighter shades so basically like the colors that you're seeing me use a lot those are really the shades that I like I love teal I love um pink a lot of my things are pink I love kanang just dark colors honestly a mix mix of both i'm not like a pastely girl so the something that's something i definitely want to change the intro, the introduction of bayhana which is pink and flowery we're going to change it don't worry <laughs> but yeah so use psychology of color next psychology of typography use that i'm going to post these research it what are certain what certain scripts or typography has like what the effects are what's the psychology behind them because they really do have an effect sometimes when you're thinking about a logo of something it should be more of how people will understand it um how people will understand your brand rather than how you feel about it you know it's it's a mix of two things sometimes most of the time because um you want people to be able to see your brand and think oh okay i know that this is um i know what this person is selling you know aside from the name aside from the color like sometimes there's like a I just think it has a very different effect when people are able to see a logo or a photo and know exactly what it is, you know. So just take that into consideration. Like, let's say if Bayhana used kanang gaming fonts, I think people would be a little bit confused, na huh? Why is it like that? So just take that into consideration. Some of the time, most of the time, that's what I really do. Next is think of also the psychology of why people share. You really have to like psychology really helps a lot. So if you can read self-help books, that helps a lot. So understand if you're creating a video or if you're create if you're planning to create a video, whether you're a business, or let's say you're creating an advertisement for your business if, or if you're creating a video, think why would someone watch this and share it? If it's a video of my personal life, so this is the answer, how can I get a bigger audience? Think of what videos or content you can make that people can share or think of why they would share it or why would they watch it like why would you have to ask yourself why would someone share or watch a video na 10 things about me when they don't even really know me they're not really interested in me yet 
So, that's also something to consider. I'm not saying don't create that content. I'm just saying uh, you have to consider what you're creating. Or if it's, why would someone watch a personal vlog of mine when they don't really, like, um, a day in my life when I don't really think that I've captivated my audience enough yet, diba? So, for you guys, I don't really know if you're interested in what I do in an, on a daily basis. So, I don't really create vlogs like that anymore. Think of, like, what are things that your consumers would most likely want to see or would compel them to watch it even more or would compel them to share it if you want your videos or your content to be seen if you're a crea- if you're a business think if my if my friend saw this what sets me apart from different businesses similar to the industry that i i am in so that's really psychology also really plays a big part when it comes to content creation next technical support i'm not really gonna go deep deep into the dark hole of technical support because i have a lot of help whether from my husband or from my friends um for the podcast i took um i really had a sound engineer come to the house and give me tips and tricks but that's something that you can definitely consider or research on but my tips when it comes to technical support whether it's in the front end the back end is to learn the functions of your accounts your platforms and etc know um what's the difference between like this is i don't know if this is technical support but it's still important to know know the like anang setting up a business account how to monetize your page how to earn how to like kind of create stuff nga, technically that would set you or put you at an advantage so always be open to learning that's the bottom point of everything um jason is saying he's learning so much hey thank you jace i'm so happy then expand your knowledge on equipment and consider investing only when absolutely necessary so this is a story that i like to share and i think jason would know this he is the barista actually or the manager of starbucks in cebu hi jason but when you're in college jason is a classmate of my or a schoolmate of mine in college we used to go on duties together every once in a while um I would disappear from my duty because I would go to an internet cafe and blog. And the reason why is because I didn't have a laptop. When I didn't have a ca- when I didn't have a camera, which is obviously like I was in college. After college, you're broke. You don't have money. You don't really have a nice job. Or a camera is not your first investment. What I would do is I would ask my photographer friends to take my pictures, and I would ask them for it. Like, wait, can I have it after? Mug, use it for your fun shoot like experience and i'll use the pictures for my portfolio so really like find ways and only invest when like it's absolutely necessary so i don't believe when people say na oi at the east i can't vlog because i don't have a nice camera like honestly there are so many vloggers who use their phones like mimi got famous using her phone diba? i don't know if mimi has a camera now but i think see mimi even would like have to go somewhere to learn how to edit or use someone else's laptop that's i think that's what i was told before yeah so there next is practice these are practices how to build confidence to um improve the way you speak and stuff like that so here practice in front of a mirror i like to practice in front of a mirror or i like to practice my lines while i'm taking a bath there make a list of content that you would like to create so for me i have different con i have a list of content that i want to create for by hana i will have content that i want to create for isa please on instagram facebook i have a list of tiktok videos that i want to make i have a list i have a list of everything because i am really like that like i really list everything down and it helps me um really become creative and when i come up with ideas i'll list it down also so i have Technically, guys, or by Hannah, we have so much content. While I've been taking a break from making videos, I have been working and really thinking of how I can improve it and what are videos that I can create for you guys. So there. Make samples, do a test run. So earlier, I did a test run and you guys saw that. And it's important. If you are making a video vlog and you're not sure of it, make a sample video, ask people what they think about it, get notes and learn how to improve. Write down notes. This is so important. So even if you're watching a video, you would make a v- list nga, oh, what do I like about her content? And then, create and continue to create amazing content. Naa na si I cam. Oh, see? Mimi's, Mimi already has cam. Good for Mimi. There. So these are best practices for your audience and for you. I really like this picture, actually. I'm so proud of it. Char. Hindi ako draw 
here best practices for your for you for your audience and for you so if you're creating content for a business or for yourself um here are some best practices send a clear message always make sure that your message gets across loud and clear if your video is teaching you how to harmonize if you're singing make sure nga the introduction says in this video i'm going to teach you how to harmonize your body should also the rest of your video should really be teaching you how to harmonize and at the end tell them that's how you harmonize and follow up what uh, what would you like to see in the next video? But make sure, guys, now if you say, saying, uh, I'm going to teach you how to harmonize in a video, that you actually teach them how to harmonize. Um, that's a way for people to really want to come back and watch your content there. Stay relevant. Um, it's kind of weird if you would like post content nga dili relevant. That's always important. Like, um, I think, what's an example? Like, things to do in Cebu. If I posted a video of things to do in Cebu right now, it's very irrelevant because people can't go out to Cebu, diba? But if you're a travel vlog, I can understand. Like, most of the time, like, even Haley will say, Haley Dasovich will be like, this video was shot, blah, 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 and I'm uploading it now because I have time to edit it. Th then that's okay. But it's very important to be relevant also and considerate of your content. Next is, e your content should be easily understood. When... If you're a business, I should, and you're selling something, I should know that you're selling something. It can't just be, oh, opening soon. And then, like, what are you opening? Like, at least give me a little bit of a teaser. Like, is it food? Is it a service? Like, I should understand what I'm looking at and be excited for it, you know? When you want to state a clear message, you can use the prep framework. Ooh, what's a prep framework? Please share, Blanche. Blanche is the hair goddess. She bleached my hair before and made it all these amazing colors. And I miss her so much. There. Next is your content has to have a call of action. If you're selling something, make sure that you say where you can buy it. Like if I am selling soap, be like, I am selling soap. This is where you can buy it. This is the price. You have to provide all the information that is required that you're your customers will potentially ask and even when you post that guys people will still ask you questions <laughs> like for example if you say guys available sa Cebu people will say available sa Cebu that's just it's it's gonna it's a little bit annoying honestly but then not everyone does it but it's important that you still have it there para um, it doesn't turn off potential customers and they'll say like ah oh, I don't even it's not complete why would I? I don't want to ask. Nah, 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 nah. So it's best to have, it's easily understood and it has the call to action. So if it's a video, um, oh, if it's like a post, I'm selling something, it's where can you buy it or subscribe for more or buy now. If it's if you're creating content, it's don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, hit that notification bell or to tell me what you guys want in the comment section below. So I don't really like to tell people to subscribe to my channel like especially on my personal youtube but i learned that it helps because sometimes people just really forget see jason's like so true one fourth sheet one fourth sheet class and then one so that's one fourth sheet ma'am see we can all relate and the next is it sparks an emotion when you're creating content you want to always consider what emotion do i want them to to, what do, what emotion do I want to spark now? Is it excitement? Is it happiness? Is it um, is it um, sadness? Is it joy? Is it hope? Is it faith? Always think of the emotion that you want to spark and spark it like a fire. You know, for me with my Hannah, I really want to spark the emotion of empowerment, and I really hope that moving forward, I'm able to do that. And then fun and informa like information, it's empowerment information and then entertainment so Marek, i just want everyone to learn and to feel really good about themselves and i think that we are going to really take that to the next level when by hana is back on track <laughs> now okay nagsinger ko dua there true reading compridge with aning uban so nika's actually kanang agreeing with what i said earlier so as a content creator as a brand 
You have to be authentic. I find authenticity to be so important, especially when it comes to you as a brand. Because your audience can tell when you're fake. Your audience can tell when... You don't, I don't know if you guys hear this, but I hear it every once in a while. Like, oh, how come that creator, like that vlogger, she's so fun on her Instagram story. She's so fun in her vlogs. But when I see her, like, she's a snob. Like, it's... Okay, just to set the record straight, most of the time, they're not snobs. They're really just like... They're introverts and they're able to be their fullest self um, on their vlogs because sila sila ramana. It's just them. But when you see them in real life, of course, like it's you don't know you're the first person to ever come up to them and say, "Oh my gosh, I love you." So, marag, that's something also that we also have to take into consideration before we call our favorite content creators snobs. But also, I think it's important for us to also be authentic and really like tell our friends or tell our audience like oh guys it's like i'm more comfortable with my friends and stuff like that it's important for us to be authentic especially like when we are posting stuff like if it's paid tell people it's paid i think it makes a difference because people can really tell when you're being real and when you're being fake and a lot of the content creators get canceled for that so yeah next is be accountable for your content so as we can see a lot of times people get canceled on the internet and uh, for me it's in it's inevitable sometimes it just happens it's a learning lesson but the most important thing is that you know when you make a mistake and you admit to it and you are open to learning and you're ready to change because you know what we're all human we all make our own mistakes but you have to really own up to the mistakes that you've made and try your best to be a better person Next, be factual and responsible with the information that you provide. Whether it's like don't share fake news, be disciplined and practice consistency. So consistency really counts if you're a brand and if you are a content creator. Next is, um, oh, DJ saying I hope to meet you soon. Be open to learning because knowledge is power. And then be professional. Also, when you start to create content and you get a lot of brand deals or brand inquiries, it's so important to be professional if you get to a point in your career where you're asked for your rate cards or like how much do you po- like how much is a instagram post for always be professional so muna siya guys even if it's like no matter how big or how small the brand is it, professionalism is so important so yeah and then also here are my tips and tricks katulgid akong ilong guys i don't know why <laughs> we're almost ending so Here are my other tips and tricks to inspire everyone. Find your fire. This is when it comes to finding your niche. Ask yourself, why do I want to create content? Am I creating content because I want an online diary? Then if that's the case, then okay. I don't really... For me, this is how I would think, ha? If I created content because it was an online diary, I wouldn't really mind if a lot of people watched my content or not. But if I wanted to create a vlog because i wanted to entertain people then i would tell people hey if you're bored maybe watch this and it's a really funny video you know if it's finding your niche find your fire so it's like for me i really saw that there was a need for women to be empowered and informed online because as a woman i felt that i wasn't really um surrounded by empowering or um, yeah empowering women yet I loved what everyone online was doing, but I felt Namrag, who's encouraging the other people to rise up and to become better, more fulfilled women. So I said, oh, I want that to be me. So that's how I found my niche. But for a while, I was already kanang doing blogging and vlogging, and I didn't really like it because they were calling me an influencer. And I was like, who am I influencing, really? I really I'm only influencing people to spend their money. I don't want to influence women that way. I want to influence them by telling them that they're beautiful. I want to inform them about their bodies, and I want them to have conversations and find their voice. So that was my fire. That was how I found my niche. Next, use your voice. Whether it's through writing, it's through talents, it's singing, it's dancing, it's acting, or through anything that you can think of, just use the sip on kanang Pino ko ganon kung manghingug mo, but I'll do it later. <laughs> also, Cody's hair is everywhere. My dog's hair is everywhere. I have to vacuum. Next is use your voice. Um, <clears throat> when you create something, never be. If you want to get more views, learn how to market yourself. Use your voice. Tell your friends, hey, I have something. Watch it. Ingana, 
be make your message loud and clear but never be ashamed of what you have created because there's really nothing wrong with if you know that there's nothing wrong with what you're doing then there's nothing wrong with it diba so yeah i was told when bayhana came out why do you do that well i lost a client but i don't understand why you have to do those things isa i was like it doesn't hurt you so why does it matter so much yeah next is Take a deep breath and remember who the fuck you are. So, I think it's really important when you are creating content because, you know, when you create content, you really are putting yourself out there. You're opening yourself up to kanang, tawag ana, to people judging you and stuff like that. But, you know, when you know who you are, it really doesn't matter what people think. So, yeah. And remember that you owe it to yourself to become everything you have ever dreamed of being. So, if you want to be a singer, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be an actress, if you want to be a boss lady, if you want to be a girl boss, then by all means, do it and don't let anyone stand in the way of that. And then, lift each other up. I do truly believe that there is no such thing as competition, especially when it comes to this industry that we're in because everyone can be a content creator everyone can own a business just because you're a creator doesn't mean that you're my competition because we have different audiences and i love every single creator out there next is don't seek the approval of others maybe seek for improvement of yourself but at the end of the day you can't really please everyone but if you're happy with your content if you're happy with what you put out then that's all that matters. You want people to like it to a certain degree, but if someone says, but if you're proud of it, then yeah. And you can always improve yourself. So that's the most important thing. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Did you guys learn? I'm gonna switch the screen so that you can see me. There. Hagardo Verzosa akong naong. So, I hope that you like that. I'm going to answer your questions now. Nalingaw mo, guys. Did you learn? I hope that you were able to take screenshots. I look like a... I look like a potato. Akong pearl earrings. Kaya mura kong... Kuan, tita. I'm gonna answer your questions now, guys, ha? Um, unsa imong mahatag nga tips for small vloggers like me? Unya, mauwaw? Oh, gosh. I lost the questions. Okay, here, here. Let's do this. How can I find your questions, guys? I have, there are, you guys are amazing because you're asking me so many amazing questions. I'm gonna try. Let's see how I can find your questions, ha? Huh? Oh, I'm happy that you guys liked it. Wait, I'm trying to find the, the comments. Because for some reason, I have it, but I don't, I cannot find find the questions hold on me hang pagod akong computer okay let's try to see where the questions are um oh i thank you so much andrea she's saying that she's been to other vlogging workshops but this one was the most effective or the most informative that means so much to me you have no idea i'm trying to find your questions guys tigil na makitaan kay ning lag akong computer Hold on. There. Huh? Let me try to fix it. Um, give me one second lang. Um, if you want, you can ask me questions right now. And then I'll answer them for you. Um, if I have a podcast class... Actually, podcasting is very simple. All I do is I use my microphone. So I have a microphone which is for my desktop good but actually you can use the microphone sa imuhang phone you can record like let's say take a video and then take the video portion out and then just use your audio edit the audio and then that's a podcast already if you want it to be a little bit more technical then you can start creating your voice over you can start adding background music but for the most part it's very simple to create a podcast it it's well it's diff it's easy and it's simple at the same time because then you start as you go along you realize oh i want to improve on my audio then you would slowly start to learn more about audio so you learn about how voice how ba sound bounces off walls so mo invest na ka in like st stuff kan mga sound absorbing stuff that pretty mahala but then for me for isa 
talks, I only really just use my microphone and I just modulate the way that I talk. Um, say mas better tayo magtagalog or English, pero mas comfortable kung magbisaya. Okay, I get this. Actually, this is a very good question. So Vladimir, what is better? What language is better? You have to really think of your audience. But honestly, for me, it's really what's comfortable for you. Because when Bayhana started, I was asked, what's better? Is it better for me to create content? Uh, is it better for Bayhana to be in Bisaya? Is it better for it to be in English or in Tagalog? But, so, I get asked this question a lot. Why is it English? People are always saying, like, kanang, nga mag English mana siya. Uy, nga naman ta sa Cebu or Bisaya mana siya. Well, for honestly, guys, I was raised in the states i grew up in the states my family speaks english um at home magbisaya me but like sometimes like english depends on the mood but the way my brain thinks is it thinks in english and then i translate it to bisaya so sometimes when i'm speaking in bisaya nya dili siya nacho nga conversation it sounds really weird so i'm not very comfortable speaking in bisaya for videos but unless like natural kaayo siya for me but Honestly, it's really just like what you're comfortable with. I mean, people will love you if you're authentic and if you're real. Because if I were to make a video in Tagalog, I think people would be like, ah, she's so conyo or yeah, she's so ngayan. So, eh, you know, it, I did want to put myself in a very uncomfortable position. So I just chose English. It, there really wasn't no, there really wasn't any reason other than the fact that I will stick to English because it's what I'm. It's what I know, and I will find an odd you. You'll find an audience no matter what language it is. Honestly, um, yeah. Next is oh, th- I'll I'll read your compliments later. Oh, I don't want to read them online because it's gonna make me like so embarrassed. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, see, AJ saying it sounds not so. I'm already playing with my hair, <laughs> but I mean, for me, guys, you really just have to find what feels natural to you and people will really like love you for that like sometimes lips <laughs> sometimes like there's uh i get compliments like oh like how come you don't put makeup on in a video or how come you don't like put like why don't you look better in videos i'm just like because i wasn't feeling like it like today i don't really feel like super doing my makeup again so this is just the most natural me <laughs> i'm trying hi sauce I, I don't know why I can't find your questions, but I know there are a lot of questions. There are like 200 comments, but my ca- my phone's not working. Uh, everything's lagging, but you guys are so amazing. Nihang Shaw, because you guys are the best. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of it, guys, I just want you to know that whether you, you want to create um, a whether you want to create content for personal use or for your business, that these are the tips and the tricks that I have done for myself, for myself personally, for Isa Please, for Isa Place, for Bayhana, everything. And then those are tips and tricks that I have found to work for me. And it's really a mix of so many things. So when you see a content creator, like I know a lot of people think, ah, so you're kind of a vlog vlog, but it really is a lot of hard work. Um, and I really think that anyone and everyone can do it, but it really does take a lot of practice. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of kanang motivation. So don't ever lose that fire in you, especially like if it's something that you really want to do, whether for yourself or because of your family, because you want them to see the memories in the past or memories in the future, <laughs> then we're like, by all means create it and like don't be afraid of what people have to say because see, oh, I I, I kind of ask if. If I was, if I, I kind of knew I was gonna a- get asked this question, but kanang, you know, sometimes people are just mean, but it doesn't matter because you're an empowered, strong person. Charat. Yeah, because Vladimir's asking now, how do I handle bashers? Well, for me, I always say, I always go back to my TikTok. Na, if they don't finance you, if they don't feed you, if they don't fuck you, then their opinion about you doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, guys, bashers will never ask you, will never bash you sa imuhang face. Like, I dare you. If, like, let's say there's a content creator that you don't like, nga no, magsigir man, maglibak ramanta, mujaj ramanta, but when we see them face to face, I don't think kita sad kaya na to, nga maingon nga, di ko ganahan ni mo. 
Like, I don't think nga, marag, I don't think that people are actually mean enough to say that to you. But also at the same time, marag, kita sad. We also have to consider the way that we treat people as well. Whether you're the basher or the, the bashy. That's something that I'm learning. Uh. As someone on the receiving end of being bashed, sometimes I learn nga marag, marag, sometimes ako sad. I, I have to admit, I don't really like every single person in the world's content. Obviously, we can't like everyone. But marag, ako sad, I just think, nga, okay, it's just not my type. I don't dislike this person personally. Walang personalan. Dili lang ako type yung content. And then I move on. And then let that person do their own thing. So, more gina guys. Like, when it comes to bashers, you just need to not let it get to you. You have to choose the things that you let affect you. So, I think that's really important. And, I, you know, at the end of the day, it's the opinions of those that matter are the only thing matter to you personally whether it be from a certain person a family a friend or yourself those are the only things that should really matter so yeah um this one is jason candy pop is asking Ange asked if 9 30 was better than six so for me Ange, it depends on your audience but for um whether it depends good but there are ways for you to see it like you can try uploading at nine and then you can try uploading at six and then you can check the engagement like you can i think you can sacrifice like two posts just to see which one does better for me personally right now everyone's just like in a whoop like in a weird place so uploading schedules don't really exist to me right now but i try to really upload kanang in the mornings but i don't really wake up early in the morning anymore so i upload like nine five kana five to nine actually any time in between there is good for me not seven because most of the time people are eating at seven there what's best uh, yeah so there angela but no the best time to upload on to post on ig so i would really say um try but for me personally i upload at five or i upload at nine because like five for students, that's the time that they get out. That's when they're on their phones. That's when I want them to see my post. Nine o'clock, I mark that's people like lying down on their phone. Na. Um, sometimes even I'll upload at like later times, like ten. Ingana, just cause like nagluhog Call of Duty and I forget. <laughs> but yeah, so you can really just experiment and compare. Um, if you don't want to like risk a post, if you don't want to sacrifice a post. Turn your Instagram into a business account and then you can actually see the analytics. You'll see how many women are looking at your post, how many men are viewing your post, what times are the best to post, and then you can um, work your content around like that. I'm like playing with my hair. <laughs> there. Um, oh, yeah. Tips on how to improve your confidence, and especially in speaking in front of a lot of people. Well, um, it really, for me, Jano, it's, what's up on how, how do you gain your confidence? I really get asked this a lot, and I don't know if there's like one legit or like just one certain way. But for me, first and foremost, confidence comes from within. And you have to really believe in yourself. You have to really tell yourself, like sometimes, like a lot of times I get nervous. Like I get so nervous. And one way for me to improve my confidence is really to prepare myself. Another way is, because I was I was really kind of nervous, guys, nga the the podcast or the stream would not like kind of do well. Ingana, but murag, you guys stayed throughout the whole thing, and I'm so super duper touched by that. So, murag, I but I did do the necessary preparations. I wanted to know what I was actually telling you guys, so practice and also put like kind of, it's really like your. Um, state of mind. You really have to tell yourself that I can do this. You have to believe in yourself. Ayo anang fake confidence because people can tell nga kanang mag ah mag this person is like not really super confident. They're just like kanang mahug na siya hambugiro ba? Just be yourself. Just be your most true, authentic self. And that's like I think for me that's really enough. People will love you, and you'll find your confidence in that already. So that's just one piece of advice. Um, is it better to include prices in captions or photos? I would suggest to include your prices on your photo. Um, for me, Mangood acts. the reason why it's better for you to put it on your photo is because your audience or something that happens is that sometimes your audience doesn't really read. Like, let's say, they look at a picture and then they won't really read the caption. Or sometimes captions can be a little bit long. So let's take... 
um, for example, Jollibee, when they sell a piece of chicken, you know how much it costs because it says so on the on the photo itself. So I would definitely put your price on the photo itself. I know, uh, knowing the industry that you're in, because Axie is my friend, guys. Um, check out her business soon. It's going to open. It's Helena Beauty. Go check it out. I'll p- plug it when it's open here. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But kanang ing ana. It's really there's like a very subtle and elegant way to do it considering the type of business that you're in so it's very important i think it really helps a lot to have like prices on your photos there um how do you st- how do you vlog and people look at you um <laughs> i don't know i just stopped caring honestly like anang, when people look at me when i hold my camera up i really just stopped caring because First of all, they don't know me, and I don't know them. So why should it? Why should I really be afraid or ashamed of what they have to say? I traveled and I had like my camera with me, and people were even like, "Oh my God, you're a vlogger!" And that's how you make friends. Even that's how I was able to make friends. So, nagita na na kung guys, so in ligo But kanang, I mean, for me, ha, like, I really just, I don't really. I don't really understand why I would be ashamed of something that I am doing, especially if I'm not doing anything wrong. So that's how I am able to go out and have my phone or my camera and vlog. Sometimes, well, oh, I understand, but as long as you're not drawing, like, I think, Mongo, there's a way that you can vlog and not be inappropriate. Because the ta- for me, sayup na siya if I am vlogging and then. Let's say I'm in a quiet room. Hi guys, what's up? It's me. Isa please mark dili sad ta magingon ana bash mga bashy cakes kay naka disturbo na sa taglain tao. So, as long as you're doing it the right way, then I don't think there's anything wrong. Ooh, analytics. I love analytics. <laughs> yes. Um Chari is saying, I love your discussion because you're so generous with the content. Oh, thank you so much. Guys, if you ever need anything, like the slides, if you, katong, like you guys are saying that you wanted me to post like the pictures, I saved all the pictures and I can definitely post them in another post here. If you want individual screenshots of the slides, I'd be more than happy to share that with you. Um, don't worry, guys. Dile, like everything that I shared with you today, I am more than happy to give out. And I really just hope that it helps you. And if we're gonna be stuck at home for the next 20 days, at least it gives you something to think about, really, and to, like, consider and to prepare for. But when we're out, we, we can all, like, be like, ah, I prepared for this, diba? So, yes. Jason saying, confident ako daan. Baga sa jukug na daan. Jace, I think it's really just, like, I really just, I don't know. Marag, dili ka ayoko mo mind mangod what people really have to say about me. I don't think... I've never stopped to ask nga, what are people saying? Kanang what's a daily box sa mga tao na ko growing up. So I think the less you know <laughs> for me it's like I really don't care what they think. So mo siguro na. But thank you. Um AJ saying is able to speak in public about cat care and SM consolation. I was scared, bro. My love to impart knowledge superseded my not confident self. So what I did was treat it as me speaking to people I know. That's true. Actually, you guys, being scared is only at the start. When I was so scared when I started vlogging. I was so scared when I started blogging. But then after a while, I really just got used to it. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Like, kanang, I was... You know, man, good when you are when you love something so much. Honestly, when you're scared about it, when it in- excites you, when kana mga when you have those feelings that are so un uncommon. And for me, those are the feelings that I love because I love challenging myself. I love putting like seeing what my what I'm fully capable of. So muna sha like for me, it's re- it's not bad. Um next. Nya yeah, gisita ka guard while nag vlog. Gisit sit sita ka gibadlong o guard while nag vlog. Ah. Wala man siguro. Wala man. Usahay gani kanang actually ang mga guard diri sa mo ano o ang mga driver diri sa mo ang kondo kailan na nako kay. Mo na sa lo, kumti nag vlog ko. Sa so, makita na sa nako karon kay 
Mau anak nak selang Mau pergi mau apa Sebelum vlog Aku berjuang Anak lang Malinga rasa sila I mean Sauna Sauna menggod Dilip pada mag video In certain places But now it's really It really is like Recommended that you take videos And stuff like that Because um, Establishments really Acknowledge vlogging And content creation As as a marketing um, Avenue for them as well So yeah There Um I will, yes, Chari, I will definitely share them. I'll take screenshots of them and everything that you guys need. Ha, huh? there. Um, yeah. See, Blanche is saying, as a calm trainer, I gain confidence along the way. I do, see, Sasa says, I do FB. Rest, those are cafes. Okay, this one is great. Tips for travel vlogs. La, we know so water kadali, huh? Um, tips for travel vlogs. Consider what your audience is looking for when they would search for a travel vlog if you if your intention is to provide information then maybe kanang nain kay akong lip gloss na baga ginako siya akong lip tint anyways hi chris chris Lynn. um anyways consider how your audience would find potential would potentially find your content so if it's if you're in cebu it's Things to do in Cebu nightlife or things to do in Cebu safari, things to do in Ocean Park or kanamayangana or best places to go to or my the best chicken restaurant in Cebu kanamayangana or kanang full day itinerary for in Bantayan kanamayangana ba. Travel vlogs, I think honestly, kanang depende siya what you're trying to relay if it's just like a personal vlog no, oh guys we went here ing ana then there's a way to do that but if it's like a personal like ana lang mag diary diary then i think there's also a very interesting way to do it like you story tell kanang maybe for me a good travel vlog is 80% videos of the places the experience and 20% of your face sometimes we have the tendency which i notice from a lot of vloggers is including myself guys nang bubud na gid akong buhok na unsa na gid ni kanang sometimes i notice from vloggers is they'll hold their phone 80% of the time nya na sila sa nag travel so I'm like but i can't see the place that you're at i came to see bantayan but i only see your face so that's also something that you have to consider so kanang experiment whether you want to do b rolls or whether you do voiceovers or kanang unsa on nimo pag relay or relay sa imuhang story so find inspiration find other vloggers whose content that you like and then try to cre- get that inspiration and make it your own there oh it's okay chris you can watch the replay so guys kanang i i can't see everyone's comments i'm so sad questions but if you have any questions moving forward feel free to ask them um whether in this thread and i will type my reply okay after this guys i will go through all the comments and then if there's something that i wasn't able to answer i will most definitely answer them for you and if kanang you have any questions that you want to ask me for whether they're personal or whether they're like kanang other questions that i wasn't able to answer by all means feel free to message me because you guys know i'm replying you go i really 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 try my best to reply Aside from when I'm playing Call of Duty or kana ako mga PlayStation guys, nalingaw ju ko do what lately. It's so much fun. So yeah, um, I guess I'm gonna skedaddle out of here because it's ten o'clock. I don't want to keep everyone out late. Um, I know that it's a Sunday and you want to spend time with your friends and your family at home. So if you guys have any questions, by all means, feel free to ask them to me, whether in the comment section or you can send me a private message. Or you can start a conversation thread here on by Hannah, and then we will all answer you, huh? So take care, guys, and I love you. I love you guys so much, and I hope na katabang niyo. I wish that there was a way for all of us to like talk, but unfortunately, Facebook Live doesn't allow you to do that. But maybe one of these days, you can all have a meet up and like manarbaho sa ta guys. Okay, magita sa kuwarta pero na ako ika bangka na tutan ano? Kana sa mga brands na gusto mo sponsor, I'm all yours, Charot. <laughs> Pero bitaw, guys, oy, ingat mo dira and have an amazing week ahead. I hope this inspires you to start the week right, uh, to start the week off on the right foot with a lot of motivation and also. Oh, <laughs> And also, guys, I hope that you have an amazing. 
time moving forward the next 20 days if there's something else that you want me to discuss let me know because we'll do it and then yeah don't forget guys knowledge is power don't forget to enjoy or to invite your other friends to be a part of the Bayhana community group for sessions like this and of course so that we can lift each other up if you start creating content or if you have a small business that you would like to share here on the Bayhana community group by all means please do share it so we can all help each other out all right and i'll catch you guys next time sakit to jerak kulikot guys okay see you love you bye bye <laughs> Mwah! Kini! Asok mo end. Okay guys, aglibo na ko. Asok mo end. Stop streaming there.